When Napoleon called us a nation of shopkeepers, he must have been listening to the music of a million tills ringing across the channel. Whether we've had cash or not, we've always been great ones for our cash registers. And for years, neither the threat of war nor national bankruptcy seemed able to silence their reassuring chatter down the high streets of Britain. But suddenly, the whole cosy world of the cash register has been turned upside down by a subtle revolution. The silicon chip has spelled death for the till. Reprieve is available only to the machine that can change its tune. And the same stark ultimatum now faces the whole of British industry. The CC148, the first British-designed, British-made, electronic, digital, secure cash register, is launched with the kind of pride and hope we used to reserve for great ships. And in a way, it'll be carrying Britain's colours in a mounting sea of competition. You can't do that with this because... Electronic cash registers aren't that new. There are 20 foreign makes already available in Britain. But the makers of this one, Chubb, better known perhaps for their alarm systems and bank cash dispensers, naturally claim it's the best. And it does indeed represent the end of a traumatic experience, one that classically illustrates the kind of dilemmas and tough decisions that more and more British firms are having to face. Because this Chubb machine is the phoenix that's risen out of the ashes of a name once synonymous with cash registers in this country, Gross. Sam Gross and his brother Henry started making cash registers before the war in a small garage. The business expanded and in 1963 they moved into a new factory near Brighton. The 4,000 separate parts of their machine were made and assembled here on the premises. Soon they'd captured 50% of the British market. And when, in 1971, decimalisation meant that everybody from the smallest corner shopkeeper to the biggest supermarket trader needed new machines, it seemed that the gods were smiling on them. That year, their pre-tax profit soared to over a million and a half pounds, and the future for Gross's thousand busy employees looked secure. Sam and Henry had become millionaires in the great British entrepreneurial tradition. But their success was based on the old mechanical concepts of the first industrial revolution, a title cheerfully used by the messiahs of a new industrial credo, electronics. When the Gross brothers realised that their competitors in America, Japan and Germany were already well advanced in the production of the new electronic machines, they leapt into a panicky, expensive and ultimately ruinous research and development programme of their own. By 1977, on the verge of bankruptcy, Gross collapsed and was taken over by Chubb. The dynamic and successful Gross brothers just hadn't been able to cope with the new technology. Let's just get this one point very, very clear. The Gross uh, factory, the Gross um, plant, was a very, very efficient one. It was, it's so fact, a great British achievement, a great British success story. They had 50% of the market for their, for their product, which is a tremendous achievement. But even then, even a well-run factory making a profitable product like that didn't react fast enough to, to the change in technology. I think that's the moral we can draw. So it's the speed of reaction that's necessary. And unfortunately, I, I'm, I must confess that Gross is by no means typical of British manufacturing industry. A, a lot of British manufacturing industry is doing far less well than they did with, with fewer resources because they're not making as much profit, with uh, fewer people working for them, uh, with fewer skilled designers, and of course, you know, if you're trying to react quickly with inadequate resources, then you really are in trouble. So, what is this electronic revolution? One that can wipe out successful industries overnight and make others among the most powerful in the world in equally dramatically short time? Well, the main thing to understand, and this doesn't seem to have been made absolutely clear in all the welter of publicity about it so far, is exactly what is meant by digital electronics anyway. Perhaps the simplest digital device is the ordinary electric switch. It's either on or it's off. There's nothing in between. In fact, all digital machines are basically made out of switches. A computer is one kind of digital machine. This is ACE, 
the first electronic computer made in our national physical laboratory way back in 1950. As you can see, it's heavy and cumbersome and fills an entire room. And it gives some idea of the enormous strides that have been made in the field in a relatively short time. The switches then were made out of nothing more spectacular than ordinary radio valves like this. These, in fact, were the fastest switches they had at the time. The real breakthrough came with the invention of this, the transistor. For the first time, they had a cheap, fast, reliable electronic switch. And then the way was paved for the next great breakthrough. Manufacturers discovered how to put not only the transistors, but other circuit elements, like wiring, onto a single sliver of silicon. The integrated circuit, the silicon chip, was born. In 1963, they could get eight devices onto one chip. Today, manufacturers are accommodating 100,000 transistors on the same quarter-inch square of silicon. The microprocessor has truly arrived. Thousands of switches just waiting to be told how to switch. And the instructions can be put on another silicon chip called a memory. And the really exciting thing is that the more vast the sums of money spent on research and development, the more powerful this little processor becomes, the cheaper it gets. You can buy one of these in Britain now for about a fiver, and it'll do many, many times more work than those huge early computers. No wonder the world's getting madly excited about it. But now that we've got the power, what are we going to do with it? Inside this black box is a microprocessor and a lot of memory. Now, I've already programmed the processor to be something quite simple, a counter. So every time I send an electrical pulse down this line, the processor will count it and display it on the screen. So let's run the program. Even something as simple as this can be quite useful. It could be counting eggs coming down a chute, matchboxes on a production line, revolutions of a car engine, anything. In fact, if I program the pulse to come down once a second, I've made a clock. Now that's a very simple set of instructions. The chip can actually handle two million separate instructions per second. To be a clock and actually put the time up on the screen takes just one twenty-nine thousandth of a second. The new Chubb machine contains exactly the same standard 6800 Motorola microprocessor. And it replaces a lot of the mechanical parts that were in the old Gross machine. There are a mere 700 now instead of 4,000. But the important thing to grasp is that you need different machines and different skills to make it. Instead of metal forming and stamping machines, you need expensive computer-controlled multiple drilling machines to accurately place the thousands of holes needed for each circuit board. And new photographic and electroplating machines to complete the circuit boards themselves. And new flow soldering machines to make the thousands of soldered joints. On top of that, you need electronic designers to write and test the programs. But above all, you need new management who understand the implications of the fast-changing digital revolution. The Gross Brothers' keen understanding of the design and manufacture of mechanical systems was useless with their electronic replacements. Because the microprocessor does far more than just make a cheaper product. It changes the whole nature of the product. Keying in prices on a cash register is in itself error-prone. Operators can and do make mistakes. But although prices may change frequently, the product itself always remains the same. Let's face it, a can of beans is always a can of beans. So supposing we write a program that gives each product a unique code or number of its own and allows the cash register to work out the cost. For instance, if we say number one is the code number for a particular brand of beans, and number two is the code for a particular cornflakes, and number three is the code for T. We then press T for total and let the machine do the rest. The thrilling thing about this technology is that as soon as you say something can happen, it does. Here in the supermarket near Spalding in Lincolnshire, they've installed Britain's first fully automatic point of sale system. In fact, they've gone one better and installed a laser scanner as well to read the codes on the products. The combination of the coding and laser systems means that the operator simply takes your money and gives you your change, plus a detailed list of your purchases and their prices 
compiled by the machine. Prices appear only on the shelves and, of course, in the brain of the machine. On each product is a unique number stamped by the store in a code the machine can read. Because the machine is capable of so much work, it's only a short step to automatic stock-taking, reordering and warehousing. The only sad thing about it all is that every bit of this electronic system is American. Not a single similarly advanced British system is on the market yet. Britain has consistently underinvested in good technology. We've, we've not spent enough on research and development. We haven't got enough skilled and trained engineers uh, in our manufacturing industry. And this, uh, and, on, on, and they've been doing, they, this has been happening for years and years and years and years. And along comes this new challenge, this tremendous challenge, which is thrilling and, and threatening. Um, and British industry just can't cope with that. Basically, if you're a good businessman, then this new technology is a piece of cake. All it does is, is show up the cracks that are already there. It hasn't created any really new problems for British industry. It's just highlighted the ones we've had for so long.